Awesome. With that, excited to kick it off and welcome you all to our first edition of Endres The Gathering. Um, we have our agenda for the day. We're going to uh, jump quickly into some project updates from various different projects across um, the Protocol Labs network. Then we have some spotlights. Please keep these to a minute each so that we can get through them. And then we have um, some demos and deep dives, uh, one from the uh, high availability Lotus provider. So um, get excited. Uh, next slide, please. The focus for, for this group is to bring together engineering and research contributors to the PL Andres Working Group um, so that we can share awesome work happening across projects um, such as Falcon, IPFS, Lib2P, and more, um, along with exciting updates across the research and development pipeline um, and new launches or notable uh, discoveries or learnings that we can share back with this community. Um, next slide highlights some of the amazing community projects that are being built in the Protocol Labs network. Um, we do a lot of collaboration with each other and um, are excited to help make each other successful. Awesome. Um, and this is our mission as a PL Andres working group. Um, we want to help support and accelerate those breakthroughs by creating some venues that uh, enable sharing updates, supporting network native research and development and growing OSS projects, networks and communities. Um, so we definitely want to create great interconnections. Thank you to Dali for this awesome Endres the Gathering poster, which really speaks to the badass community of uh, of collaborators who can use this venue to share some updates and then exciting to excited to kick out deeper dive um, discussions, collabs from there. So please keep a uh, comments, questions, other things rolling in the chat. Um, for the content here, we're going to be covering lots of amazing projects across the entire research and development pipeline. So um, expect some stuff that's very early stage speculative um, that folks can build on and expect some stuff that's uh, later stage highlighting new releases or new functionality um, that uh, you know affects a, a large scale production audience. Um, cool. And with that, uh, one last call for or request for folks here. Um, we do our best to spotlight upcoming upgrades, releases, and launches. Um, we're building out the 2024 um, calendar right now. And so if you have an upcoming release or upgrade roadmap or similar, you could ping them to me on Palcoin Slack. I would love to include them in uh, kind of our overall roadmap for uh, next month for our next interest gathering. So shoot them my way. Thanks. With that, I think we're headed into projects. Starting with IPFS. First is me, yes. Yeah, so Shipyard. So Interplanetary Shipyard uh, is a new entity that, that formed recently coming out of PL Inc. Uh, we work on IPFS and Lib2P implementations and measurements of them. You can find us in Filecoin Slack or the various IPFS working groups, you know, Implementers Working Group, DAPS, Helia, et cetera. Some recent work. So Helia and Kubo and Boxo have a number of releases. Yeah, you can see there's a number of, of you know pinning related changes, uh, named pins, or requests for a a long time in in Kubo, having protections of the RPC API, and and upgrades in in Helia as well. We have Rainbow and the the Waterworks. Waterworks is sort of public goods for things like gateways and delegated routing and that kind of thing. Now having new, having you know custom implementations that are better supporting that, and we have some upcoming work. Uh, if you have some needs from IPFS or the PDP tooling, give us a uh, give us a shout, uh, and we'll chat. Uh, hello, on the um, probe side of things, as an update for uh, for IPFS, we have been monitoring as we do uh, several metrics on the IPFS network. Uh, at towards the mid beginning of mid uh, to mid of December, we've seen a large spike in the number of nodes that entered the network. Uh, that was due to a misconfiguration from another uh, network and uh, caused the nodes, as you see uh, in this um, left top graph here, to shoot up to more than three hundred thousand uh, nodes, which was not kind of um, yeah the, uh, the the natural growth of IPFS. The problem with that was that, as you see in the next graph, most of these nodes appeared as offline, so it, it was difficult to reach or unreachable, uh, <clears throat> which in turn meant that the vast majority of nodes, like the largest percentage of nodes, were uh, were appearing offline. And um, on the bottom 
uh, list of graphs, we see that this affected the lookup latency, which had a spike towards the mid of December, um, and a severe latency increase when publishing content to the network. Um, so, of course, that was not great news, but um, we worked together uh, with the um, developers from the uh, Avail project that um, jumped into uh, jumped into this straight away, and we fixed the issue. We see that uh, numbers went back down, um, and things are looking normal. Um, you can find all of the metrics that we're gathering at ProBlood.io, as well as the links to each one of those graphs in the slides. Uh, thanks for that, and over to Mosh. Hi, so back in November, um, we announced that the IPFS and the P2P projects were going to take the next steps in project maturation and form independent entities and operations outside of PL. Um, so here, I'm here with a couple updates on that. Um, the IPFS core cell is formed and the first grants are being distributed. Um, we have refreshed a list of working groups, public working groups um, for the project. Uh, the DAFs working group started um, getting together last fall. Dean is the chair of that. The comms working group recently booted, had its first meeting last week. Uh, Jackson Dame is that chair. Um, Browsers and Standards, chaired by Robin Bergeon. Um, you can go to Luma for a relatively complete list, and we're working on getting more comprehensive um, indexing GitHub um, for all these working groups. Um, and then also save the date. Uh, we are planning the big IPFS community event for the year, um, second week of January in Brussels, aligned with ECC. Um, the design will be sort of a hybrid of camp and thing, um, with you know a target of fifty percent sort of existing IPFS community implementers, maintainers, um, sort of uh, it and and tooling builders, and then fifty percent users. Um, so. That includes anyone listening out there. Um, please save the date as well. So, thanks. And over to the P two P. Hi, hi up. It's me again uh, for the P two P, the ultimate modular networking stack for peer to peer uh, networks that is powering most of uh, Web three projects and networks. Uh, starting with Go P2P, um, the immediate next steps, as you, as you know, are uh, WebRTC, which has been in the works for a while and is a big, big thing. Uh, when this lands, we're going to have native nodes anywhere in the network that um, currently have to go through a relay. They won't have to do that anymore and they, can, they will be able to connect with browsers directly. Um, and you know that, that is going to be a game changer because basically web browser connectivity is going to go um it is going to be stable uh, for good now to achieve that there are a couple of uh, small things to do uh we need to um yeah finalize this pr there on the thing packet that needs to be up before closing the data channels to, to avoid leaving um others hanging there and of course, the resource usage is um, very important and needs to be tested before it goes out of experimental mode that, um, where it is right now. Uh, the second big thing is Autonut v V2. Um, as we know, Autonut has been uh, in production for years, uh, but there are some shortcomings which you can find and we have talked about elsewhere. Uh, now, what needs to be done there in order to improve that is we want to allow for testing reachability of individual addresses, um, avoid amplification attacks, and provide the verification mechanism for successful dials. Um, more details on this on the links that are um, in the slide. And as for the future of GoLipitB, we want to implement error codes. So you can think of that as HTTP status codes, but for Lipitb. Uh, because right now, when an error occurs, you know the, the remote party is just leaving the connection, um, which is not great because it's leaving us in a state where we don't know what happened. With error codes, we will at least know, and then we can go and fix it and not have it there the next time. So that's that's great, but it's not going to come until towards the end of Q1. Um, on JSL B2B, there is there is lots to be, to, to be shared there, and that um, yeah, this set of bullet points is not doing it justice. Uh, I'm going to point to the blog post there and can put it in the chat as well. But we are going to do a spotlight in the next gathering if there is space. So stay tuned for that. Um, and finally, on Rustly B2B. Um, Autonaut V2 is almost complete in that implementation of Lipid V. Um, the, the, 
there are some reviews pending. The link is there um, and is is close to being com completed. Um, Rustly B2B is the most active implementation. Shipyards right now doesn't have a full-time maintainer for uh, Rustly B2B. So you, um, if, you, if you want to contribute, of course, help is more than wanted, but uh, make sure to uh, contact us or you know stay uh, connected in the well-known channels for Rustly B2B. We're going to be reorganizing the calendar uh, the community calendar and um we'll keep up with that so that anyone interested can can get involved that's it thank you once again all right lip p2p community that is me thank you Giannis. um before i start i wanted to add to Giannis's point about rest lip p2p um i'm the closest thing to a maintainer right now so i'm filling in a little bit on the rest of the pdp project but we are looking for a volunteer maintainer so if anybody wants to step up um i'd be happy to uh, help them come in and know uh what you know how to how to manage the 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 project um from the start um so as mosh pointed out Lib P2P is going out on its own as of you know November. We we've moved out and organizing the community. There's a lot of really good things about the Lib P2P community right now. You know, Lib P2P obviously is in a very strong market position. There's like something like 300 billion in market cap that rests on Lib P2P. Um, it's at the heart of many of our favorite projects. And as you can see from the graph in the lower right hand corner, all of our numbers are slowly going up and to the right in terms of community participation. Um, as of right now, the Lib P2P community is well funded. Our grant program is coming online and and um, we'll be uh, supporting community operations in the ongoing future. There are some things we could improve on. Um, as we move out to being an independent project, I would like to see us include all implementations on an equal footing. And um, we will be highlighting all of them here uh, as they release and getting incorporated in new projects and things like that. Um, I like Molly's timeline of releases. I think we need one for libp2p. Um, so what can you expect in 2024? Uh, we're going to, as, as Giannis pointed out, the calendar is getting reorganized. We're going to be booting up community calls or reestablishing community calls uh, on the regular. So, um, and, and the community calendar is going to be fairly open. If you have something that's libp2p related, like you want to do a local meetup or anything like that, reach out to us. We'd be happy to highlight it, help you market um, get users there. We're going to attempt to participate in events worldwide on a voluntary and uh, basis. Um, we're looking for speakers who want to uh, get read in on a speakers group, right? And uh, so that we can have coverage globally and raise the profile of the project. The monthly newsletter and blog is also looking for people who want to write pieces or highlight their projects or things like that. More on that coming soon. All community-wide or uh, announcements will be in the discuss.libp2p.io um, discussion forums, as well as in the discussions on GitHub for the various projects. So just watch there for announcements. And this is really becoming something where the community needs to step up and take ownership. And I'm happy to organize and run meetings and get everybody to show up and, and get us going on the right same direction. So as for changes in the structure of the project, the last column over the right there, who now? Um, our community chair at this point is Raul. Uh, you can get him at protocol on GitHub. Um, he's also Raul K on the Filecoin Slack. Uh, I am the community architect, to borrow a term from the Linux Foundation. Um, you can get me at D Hughesby on, on GitHub. And I'm also Dave, lib P2P community on Filecoin Slack. And then we also have our community project manager and security chair, which is Prithvi Shahi. He's P I on GitHub and also that on Filecoin. So that's it for Lib P2P. Let's make 2024 a real growth year. Yeah, we're trying to build Filecoin D storage network for Web3, but also a robust, uh, efficient foundation for humanities information that's currently living in Web2. Uh, next slide, please. A quick update uh, from Lotus. We just published our latest release, v125.2, I believe last week. Uh, there are a couple critical bug fixes and improvement towards uh, the syncing issues that some of the node operators are seeing in this release. We highly, highly recommend everyone to update to this release as soon as possible. If you have any questions, please reach out 
to us in the Theo Lotus Help channel. Uh, we also have a very exciting new Lotus provider, Alpha, out in this release. Um, this brings us to high availability post workers. And currently, the team is already adding on ceiling pipeline to this new single binary of your power base for providing storage on network. I believe we have a deep dive later, so I won't go into too, too much detail here. Uh, we also recently integrated uh, the Supranational PC2 binary, which allows a uh, storage provider to perform a PC2 task as fast as like 2.5 minutes that uh, will significantly improve everyone's ceiling rate. Uh, so if you haven't checked check it out yet, please do. Uh, we also have our first upgrade in 2024 that's coming up. Uh, whole name Dragon, I believe that's because it's the year of Dragon in China. Uh, I think that's why Caitlin probably should correct me if I'm wrong. But the code release is coming up on January the 30th. All the implementers, uh, implementation teams are hard down or working towards our goal. And we're hoping to launch uh, the upgrade uh, in mainnet on March the 18th. Uh, we have a, more, a little bit more details on what's going to be shipped uh, from this upgrade in the spotlight. Uh, we just got the guest number for the actor events that can power through the uh, the network monitoring tools and the gas numbers looking really, really good. So we're expect uh, we're expecting to have that in the upcoming upgrade. Uh, also, there are new fifths that's coming up. So recently, we just passed last call for the super snap that's coming from the proof team. Uh, will help people to make snap deals even faster, uh, more cost efficient. Uh, the Irene and Luca uh, also just opened the SIP draft for NI Pro that will be simplifying the ceiling pipeline and the fully enable. Sorry, I didn't finish the sentence there, but fully enable CD as a service and inactive CC sector uh, market. Um, many teams are collectively working on bringing fast finality uh, F3 into Filecoin mainnet. We're definitely hoping to launch that gradually into the network sometimes in Q2, Q3. Um, if you want to follow the work and contribute, help us all this, all this the consensus and, and the code, find us in Feel Fast Finality channel in Falcon Slack. I also opened two FIPS recently. The first one is converting the many reserve account from a multi-sig to a keyless account so that the network is more decentralized and protocol improvement can be made via FIPS. Uh, we are also proposing to drop in the existing proof commit sectors uh, just in favor of the new proof commit uh, methods that's introduced in the, by the DDO that's coming in the next upgrade so that we can make a proof commit aggregation make sense again to free up more chain bandwidth for other activities and also reduce the system cron usage. Uh, last but not least, the CEO team uh, has opened an updated activation timing suggestion for the lower bound uh, of the sector initial pledge just to make sure that not only we are securing the network, but also um, it makes sense um, crypto account-wise. I feel bad I didn't include any event and things like that, so I'm just going to do a flat out a call out. We are, uh, we are host hosting a protocol forum kind of open office hour call in February just to break down the ne um, upcoming network upgrades uh, for the community members. So if you have any questions, stay tuned and join us uh, later on. Uh, we are also hoping to have a couple of Filecoin Dev Summit this year too. So if you have ideas on what kind of the format or the, uh, or what kind of the contents you are hoping to see, like a Hexon conference, dog for day, if you have any ideas, reach out to me at Jenny Juju on Filecoin Slack. Uh, we would love to hear from you. Hey guys. Um, so yeah, we've got a brand new website. Uh, please check that out. Let us know what you think. Give us some feedback. Um, we're very excited to now be the main snapshot service provider, um, since the fill-out service was sunset, uh, we've certainly seen a big jump in usage and things seem to be holding stable and, and looking good. Um, this is kind of a, a theme for us. Uh, we're definitely looking at, uh, both, you know, increasing the, uh, features of Forest, as well as starting to participate more in actively running infrastructure within the network. Um, and so within Forest, we're really focusing on improving the RPC boot node and archival data uh, functionality. Um, and then along with that, we're also starting to run boot nodes. Uh, we are implementing 
uh, a new version of the snapshot service, which will hopefully um, have some additional resiliency built in. Um, and we're also starting to operate uh, a few uh, Caleb net miners, which will be Lotus at this point, but uh, we, we do dream. Um, and then in parallel to all of that, we're also pairing for uh, next network upgrades and implementing fast finality. Um, certainly for us, I think really the focus for this year is growing the usage of forest. So if anybody is interested in running a forest node, please do reach out to us. We'd love to chat to you. Um, find us on Slack. Thanks. Hey, everyone. Um, uh, wonderful to always be uh, talking about the progress of Takayao in the um, uh, computer for data universe and, and where we fit in. Um, uh, you know, we're, we're just coming up, interestingly, on the second year of Bakayao. The first line of code was written in February of 2022, uh, and it's been a phenomenal growth uh, since we've gotten there. Uh, next slide, please. Um, you know, our progress uh, has been um, uh, really on the technical side. Like we've gotten so much customer feedback and usage and interesting things uh, happening. Uh, since last we spoke, um, uh, you know, back out hit 1.0 in February, or excuse me, in May of last year. Uh, we've had two significant releases since then, 1.1 in the, in the fall and uh, 1.2 in December. Uh, tons of activity, uh, private IPFS cl uh, clusters, simpler uh, configuration of nodes and uh, TLS support, uh, tons of GPU support and our uh, web UI, as well as integration with uh, more traditional storage mechanisms like S3 uh, buckets and cloud buckets. Um, coming in uh, the Q1 in the end of this quarter, uh, we have a bunch of things around authentication and authorization. This has been in demand for a lot of um, uh, corporate folks who want to integrate us with uh, their LDAP and uh, other solutions, um, as well as a lot more um, simplicity around offline execution, uh, which helps with our um, uh, consensus-based networks as well. Um, uh, you can see our community growth there. Uh, you know, line goes up into the right. Um, uh, but, you know, really, it's been super cool to see people like from the external community um, plug in and, and be a part of our overall network. Um, next slide, please. Uh, the biggest thing for us is, is just continuing to listen to users. Uh, we had some really nice uh, use cases and presentations. Uh, the U.S. Navy is now using Bacchia, which is uh, out of left field, but uh, really cool using us on uh, submarines, which is neat uh, in uh, non-combat situations, but still using us, uh, which is really fun. Uh, we were able to present at uh, KubeCon, at reInvent, at uh, Open Source Summit in Japan, and Web Summit. Uh, really exciting um, that uh, people are seeing enough value in Bakayao for us to be presenting at these locations and talking about all the goodness that is uh, Bakayao, IPFS, computer data, and so on, as well as being part of uh, several incubators. So um, uh, things are going really well. And uh, if you have partnerships or places that we can plug in to help your projects out, um, we could be more excited. Uh, back to you, Molly. Awesome. I think that's up for our project updates. So now we have a couple spotlights on um, recent or upcoming launches so that um, everyone sees aware of cool stuff. Over to Kieran, I believe, uh, from CryptoEcon Lab. Yeah, we have been investigating the state of the Filecoin network uh, since it's the start of the new year. And we had a milestone where QAP crossed under the baseline back in December 17th of 2023. So uh, we wrote a report uh, detailing what this means for the network, for storage providers, and so on. But just to give a couple of quick highlights, um, when the QAP goes below baseline, it uh, triggers a switch in the pledge mechanism. And so this pledge is now going to, is forecasted to decrease. <clears throat> and this is actually a anti-fragile mechanism built into Filecoin to encourage more onboarding because as pledge gets cheaper, your fill on fill returns increase, which should incentivize people to onboard more power and invest into the network. Um, and so this is technically a good thing in the sense that uh, we have ma improving macroeconomic conditions combined with increasing returns in Filecoin. So we hope to see more investment into the network. Um, but for a more detailed analysis, you can see this report that's linked here, um, and I can provide it in the comments as well. Uh, that's that's all I have. Hi. Uh, so this was about um, a demo done with uh, in partnership with Lockheed uh, Martin, and 
It's about synchronizing data between a ground station and a satellite um, in both directions. Um, the basic premise was just to prove IPFS useful in a satellite situation at all. Um, we only implemented the parts that were actually needed for this particular project. So that would be Unix FS files and Roblox. Uh, we used a, a custom protocol that only sent the minimum data we needed because in the situation this bandwidth really is at a premium. We also did some things to reduce dependencies and reduce binary size at build time, um, just in case you need to do an update to an already deployed satellite. Um, but it was successful. We got files um, of various sizes sent uh, in both directions. And so that opens the door for um, possible future development. Super cool. Thanks for making it happen and for sharing it. There's a blog post as well that people can read to learn more. That was such a cool mm -hmm. demo and a hard act to follow. Um, everyone check out the blog post and all I linked. Um, hi, I'm back. I'm here to share that libp2p and IPFS um, both were recognized in the latest round of the Optimism Retro PGF. Um, libp2p, the number five vote getter, um, it's a direct dependency of Optimism, and then uh, IPFS, the number 21 vote getter. Um, and so uh, maybe unpacking the process a little bit, because I know folks are curious. Um, voting was done by about 200 badge holders. A lot of them published ranked lists that then were fed into other badge holders um, selections. So um, each each badge holder could vote however through whatever method or and inputs they wanted, but a lot of them ended up kind of publishing their own stack rankings ahead of the vote and then incorporating each other's. Um, the second thing, the application form was super short. I think there were two sections for paragraphs and then a lot of lines for, for links. So the project's reputation, websites, GitHub's really spoke for themselves. And I think that's all due to the incredible communities behind these projects, not only today, but for the past 10 years since um, they were first created. Um, I'm sure many of you are curious what's going to happen to these funds. Um, they're going to be managed by the core cells and go to a combination of rewarding prior contributors, rewarding their own upstream project dependencies. And then um, in, I know I can speak for IPFS core, um, the majority of it will go to um, continuing to support the technical and social substrate for these projects. Um, so thank you to everyone, um, past, present, and future, who are co contributing to these, um, and also to Robin and Dave for submitting the application and getting those over the line. Woo -woo. Thanks, Mosh. Over to Patrick for Station. Hey there. Um, Patrick from Station. Uh, Station allows anyone to join the Filecoin and Web3 economy. Uh, so please tell your friends who are te potentially not as technical as you are to download the Station app and get started. Um, we launched Station with payouts uh, just before Lab Week last year, so beginning of November. At that point, we had uh, around 10 stations, and you can see that we've gone through the orders of magnitude uh, first three in November and then reached 10,000 Station nodes at the beginning of this year, which is a nice New Year's surprise. Um, so the station net network is growing fast, which is really exciting. And as you can see on that map, there's stations all over the place. We've even got one in Greenland. Um, the first module running on station is called Spark, and Spark uh, samples retrievals from Filecoin storage providers. Um, you can see that in the last seven days, we've tested 502,000 different CIDs, and these CIDs are taken from LDN Fill Plus uh, storage deals. So they're the ones which are supposed to be publicly and fast retrievable. Um, we're performing loads of retrievals, and we, we can really kind of dial that up or down uh, based on how, what we think is the right amount of retrievals to, to sample the network. And at the bottom, we can see the retrieval success rate, which we would like to improve. So that's the whole point of Spark. We're trying to get this graph to go up and be a really nice level. Uh, some team updates. Uh, Spark, we launched it, and we've learned a lot about building smart contracts in the FPM since then. And we've actually massively reduced the uh, the gas costs, which are now almost negligible, which means a high percentage of the fill is going to the station operators. Uh, that's, that's behind Spark. We're building a public Spark dashboard so that everyone can see all the stats uh, behind uh, this, this protocol. And then we're also working on a second paying module uh, to follow Spark. So loads going on. Uh, please reach out if you have any questions. Awesome. Um, next, I think we have NV22. Hey, everybody. This is going to be a quick summary of all the goodies landing soon in Filecoin Network version 22, codenamed Dragon. First up is FIP63, which will allow Filecoin to leverage DRAN's new QuickNet network and its three-second unchained randomness beacons. 
FIP74 will remove Chrome-based automatic deal settlement, which currently accounts for a huge percentage of network computational cost by the market actor. 74 addresses this unsustainable cost. 76 is direct data onboarding. Direct data commitment interceptors will significantly reduce expense and gas costs using a new data onboarding pipeline. And it brings us one big step closer to an L2 storage market. FIP83 brings enhanced external monitoring of crucial network information such as data cap allocation and sector lifecycle transitions. There's lots more info on the slides and all of the blue FIP numbers shown on the, our clickable links. So please take a quick look and join the conversation. The current upgrade timeline is on the right where you'll also find a few links to other potential projects that we're really looking forward to this year. So we've got the last call has already passed on 15th of January, the upgrade timeline, code freeze 30th of Jan, Caleb net upgrade for 20th of Feb, mainnet for the 18th of March. That's it for me. Thanks for, for listening and over to Galen. Awesome. Uh, coming in from Filecoin Foundation, Filecoin Plus Governance, we have a Round five notary election cycle, giving an update here context. We're building, we're, we're supporting people building more specialized pathways to data caps. We're moving away from sort of the single LDN or large data set world that um, you may be familiar with uh, and into lots of different teams building their own sort of um, pathways that are more specialized to their clients, their type of data, and how they're doing deal distribution. You can see more from Lab Week talks, uh, link there. The process is also spelled out pretty clearly in the GitHub readme, but a big, big update is that there's a hard deadline, January 20th, for your submission of uh, your Airtable responses. So if you are building a pathway to DataCap or a friend or a team that you know of wants to be giving out to DataCap to clients, January 20th is that deadline. At this point, we have 81 GitHub issues that have been opened with 72 Airtable responses. So 72 um, out of those 81 applications have been submitted. If you have questions, come find us um, in Slack and check out those recorded things. Thank you. I'm 13 seconds over. Awesome, though. We are now in our deep dive section. Um, and so we'll hopefully have a little bit of time for Q&A at the end as well. But um, Andy, we'll hand it over to you to tell us about high availability with Lotus Provider. Hey, everybody. Um, so this is an update on what is typically called the Lotus Miner team. We're uh, branded Curio now and working on replacing Lotus Miner and Worker with uh, a clustered solution called Lotus Provider. Uh, the neat thing about this is uh, due to this modified greedy work distributor uh, algorithm that we've got in play here, um, we can have any of the machines you see on the right go down and still have 100% uptime for uh, answering posts, uh, scheduling the work, and even responding to HTTP requests on the remaining uh, up nodes. Um, and it also offers durability and uh, so that uh, even partially worked uh, tasks get completed um, and load balancing. So uh, this might sound a bit complicated, uh, bringing clustering to something that used to be hub and spoke. So uh, on the next slide, we've got a, uh, a video of literally all it takes uh, to make this happen. In this demo, I will show the three steps for migrating to Lotus Provider. In this demo, I'm setting up a single Yogabyte database for demonstration purposes. But users can set up multiple Yogabyte databases in a cluster to enable high availability. You can find the install steps for Yogabyte DB in our documentation. Let's configure the sector index to be in the Yogabyte database instead of an in-memory process on the Lotus Miner. In your Lotus Miner config.toml file, go to the subsystem section and locate the enable sector index DB config and set that to true. At the bottom of the config file, you can also see that we have a new section called Harmony DB. Set the host to wherever your Yogabyte database is located. In our case here, it's localhost. We can now restart the Lotus Miner process to make these changes take effect. At restart of the process, the sector index will be initialized on Yogabyte DB, and we can confirm that it's working by running a Lotus Miner proving compute window post command. In the final step, we will migrate window post to the Lotus provider and completely disable window post computation and scheduling on the Lotus Miner so that the Lotus provider process takes care of it. First, we need to stop the Lotus Miner process. 
Then we need to get permissions from the Lotus chain daemon, which we want to connect the Lotus provider to. After that, we can run a migration script with the Lotus provider config from miner dash dash to layer base. This will migrate all the needed configs from your Lotus miner to Lotus provider. Before we can start the processes back up again, we need to disable window post entirely on the Lotus Miner process by setting disable built-in window post equals true in the Lotus Miner config.toml file. After that, you can restart the Lotus Miner process and the Lotus Provider process. We can confirm that the Lotus Provider process now is able to schedule and compute window post by running the Lotus Provider test window post task command and see that it inserts a window post task to the database, which it picks up and computes. So uh, to expand on that, uh, this window demo. and winning post are both available uh, today in production on uh, uh, 125.2 release of Lotus. And lastly, we're planning to bring ceiling over, but certainly it's getting more complicated with a bunch of separate tasks, partially owning uh, the scheduling work. So to make things easy, um, we have added a uh, GUI for visualizing what the cluster is doing, and that should uh, make things a whole lot easier to uh, to operate. Right, thanks. Awesome. Thanks for the deep dive and demo. Um, thanks everyone so much for attending. We got through it a little bit faster than expected, which is awesome. Um, and if you have other demos or deep dives for our next monthly gathering, um, please shoot them to Andres admin and we can get you uh, added and set up uh, to to help present your work. Um, we're excited to to showcase any research breakthroughs, um, new engineering work, or exciting launches. Um, so please, uh, you can fill out the linked form or email us at andresadmin at protocol AI. Um, if anyone has any questions or Q&A, we're happy to stay on for a little while longer. Um, otherwise, uh, excited to go see what you all are building and showcase it next month, um, making the future better day by day.